Let's kick things off with the number 25 game on the most wanted list. Still wakes the deep. I mean, what better setting for our first game than a collapsing oil rig off the Scottish coast haunted by an otherworldly monster? This psychological horror game features zero weapons, but I'm sure the protagonist will be totally fine. From the Chinese room, the studio behind Dear Esther and Amnesia, a machine for pigs, this is one of only two horror games in our countdown. Oh, dude, actually, I think they're showing Frostpunk 2 on this. Number 25. Still wakes the deep. Oh, yeah, I remember this game. This one did look pretty good. Hey there, PC Gaming Show. My name's Jason Graves, and I'm super excited to be able to officially announce that I'm the music composer for Chinese Rooms Still Wakes the Deep. Yeah, this the game Chinese was a cool Room concept. It has a history of incredible music in their games, and I'm really excited to be a part of it. We knew very quickly that we wanted to work with Jason because we're not only doing scary music, we're not only trying to scare the player, there's other emotions we're also trying to evoke. So we needed someone who could walk that very fine line that we're trying to achieve, yeah. I can be scary all day, and that's fun. But what really makes it fun, I think, is that combination of emotional and scary, because one sort of feeds the other. And the setting of the rig in the middle yeah, of the Yeah, I mean, this one's definitely like score and worth sort of yeah. smaller holding on. and dialed in. We sort of split the sounds of the score. This is one of the more half, interesting and one half of scary the score, games coming out. We've got live strings and live woodwinds. You can't replace live players. These players are fantastic. And it's about the emotion and the humanity. The other half of the score is a synthesizer and an actual sound sculpture that was built specifically for the score. I've got a friend who literally is a metal artist, and he ended up creating a sculpture which he affectionately named The Rig. Every surface of it can be tapped, bowed, scraped, or, or rubbed, and it makes all these different sounds. Whoa. And they are about as non-human <laughs> and non-emotionally tender or sensitive as you can get. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. It's an emotionally complex game, and I think the music is able to reflect this. Yeah, I like the, the concept the, that you're stuck on an oil rig. Uh, this several different families. That's fucking kind of creepy. And this game, I think, is going to be the only one fantastic entry in the Chinese room catalog. They're already scary. Yeah, that's cool. There's not many scary games dropping, so like, I'm glad there's one like this coming out. And just hope they pull of it off. Most wanted games on PC. Number twenty-four, Sword of the Sea. Oh yeah, this one looks sick too. Games have a special capacity for movement, for empowering us to move in ways that are graceful or athletic or physically impossible. In this game's case, you're hoverboarding across magical, otherworldly terrain. And if anyone can turn gliding on a magic sword into an experience of meditative wonder, it's the visual and musical artist behind Yeah, this looks empty. like uh, it'll be a good short story. Number 23, Holston. Oh yeah, this game looks fucking cool too. Tomus, kochaneczku. Isn't there a demo for this? Yeah, this game has like a great fusion. Yeah, that's that's super unique. I feel like I haven't seen a game do that. Oh shit, it's coming out on everything, huh?
Yeah, that looks cool, man. Number 22, Persona 3 Reload. Persona is such an interesting game as well. PC Gaming Show, go round, Mia san. Konnichiwa. Persona 3 Reload, producer, no, Nitsuma Ryota des. Persona ain't my shit. It's super popular, though. Most wanted games, ni, Honsako, and the Itadaki. Makotoni, Ariato, Gozaimas. Mia san, no, Oki, Naki, Tayo, Kanji, Rate, Totemo, Reshi, to Tomoni. Muir has played all the personas. Kaihatsuichido, Mia Hikishimaru, Omoi des. Persona series no turning point to not that Persona 3 から 17 年 Imano P Stadio no Tede, Yoso Yoratani, Marekawata, Persona 3 Reload Ponsako no Tojo character no Hitori, Amada Ken no Shoka Yezo, Sendit Kokai Shimashtaga, Mite Tadakemashta. Skull and Bones is going to be number one. I don't think so. Honditsua, Kochiro, Mia Santo Shoni, Mite Tadakemashta. Did Skull and Bones get delayed again? Dozo. So I decided to call this meeting to introduce him to the rest of the squad. Didn't they say that? I'll try not mm. to get in anyone's way. Swallow will air this winter as a TV special. Huh? Wow, a spinoff with Swallow as the main character. I gotta make sure I record that. Yeah, I watch it every week without fail. But this TV special is big news. Swallow doesn't usually make much of an impression, but there's a theory that he's actually stronger than Hawk. Really? Uh, I uh, heard that from a friend. I chose a long weapon so I could match the reach of an adult. Ah! Oh, I hit my shin again. Now's my cheats. Fuck! I'm catching this! Yeah. Hey, yo, I mean, shit. Someone's playing them. It ain't me. It ain't me. But I understand these people are playing them because there's like a hundred of these. How did you get started? I was working as a young man named Amada Ken. Please put it in the party and fight together with me together. Persona 3 Reload is for the first time to play Persona 3 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 for the first time to play Did I play that one persona? Isn't that the that girl said something? She wanted to go somewhere. I forgot where she wanted to go. Or she was singing a song. Oh yeah, Junez. Something something Junez. Oh yeah, unrailed. Yeah, and this is actually a good game. So this, this is a great party game. This game was fucking stressful, dude. Yeah, this was actually a solid game. Unreal 2, damn, bro. Unreal 2 steams into early access in 2024. Hey, yo, Ellie doing what I'm at. Thanks, most dude. Wanted with a game that's a truly handcrafted work of art. A stop motion story of friendship on an alien seabed featuring a lovingly sculpted ensemble of stranded weirdos. Let's take a look. I will say, so far, all these games are wish listed. Other than Persona is just not my style, but. Number two. Oh, Harold Halibut. Harold Halibut. This also looks sick because it's like some Wallace Hi. and Gromit shit. More than shit. 10 years ago, we started building tiny sets and puppets to make our game Harold Halibut. Now, the wait is almost over. Enjoy our new trailer. Yeah. Learning about people is a kind of adventure. 
a way of exploring lots of little worlds that exist within the fedora. Even the if fedora? one of those little worlds looks barren and uninhabitable from the outside, usually when you make contact with it, you'll find plenty of life and laughter there. Hello again, my alien fish bud. How are you doing? Too bad you can't tell me. <gasps> yeah, it's pretty sick how a game like Please. this is being made. I quite wondered if maybe you'd take Harold with you. Me? To the cave? Yes, to investigate the source of the particles. Humans are so unpredictable and complicated. There is almost nothing to understand. Please witness the future of Fedora. I thought you said it wasn't a vote. It's not. I just happen to agree with them. Is that not a computer? You may commence stage D as discussed. Hmm. Something is afoot. Too many things that don't add up. It all seems a bit fishy to me. Yeah, the fusion of puppet with game is like so intriguing. Number 20. Star Wars Outlaws. I am Star Wars out, but I believe the studio could make a better game than hey there, Jedi I'm Survivor. Nation. I'm a content creator, but if you couldn't tell, I'm also a huge Star Wars nerd. I'm really excited about Star Wars Outlaws. I have very high hopes for it because the Star Wars universe obviously is very cool. They're focusing on kind of more of the original trilogy era, which is very cool. But I'm also happy that they are not doing a Jedi or Force sensitive Thing. at least that's what it appears from the trailer but rather just like a heist video game which should be really cool and i love seeing developers lean into single player games because not everything needs to be multiplayer not everything needs to be online i love single player stories that are crafted to be just a really good experience from start to finish so i'm really excited about it and i hope the star wars outlaws is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I want to see if they pull this one off. I'm that that's I'm just I st I believe in massive entertainment, so we'll see. That one's a, like mm. we have all heard that devils may cry. But do they kickflip? From Devolver Digital, a dreamlike game of diabolical skating. Number 19. Gate story. Oh yeah, this game looks fucking cool. This game had such a good trailer. We got our first glimpse of Skate Story way back in 2020, leaving us with fevered visions of a demon with glass skin, a skateboard, and a quest to swallow the moon. Guys, they Very clearly had a production problem. She's blurry. Move the fuck on. Play of skateboarding seems like the perfect thematic match. Our most wanted experts are desperate to land an unholy heel flip in the underworld. Yeah, this game looks like trippy as fuck, but you know it's gonna have a good OST. Wait, which one is this one? Number 18. Oh, 18. Menace. What the hell is this? Battle Brothers? Oh, wait, hold up. Maybe? Turn base is my least favorite top down. I need I need faster pace. That's why RTS is it's like, all right, I'm I'm always doing something. I gotta be doing shit constantly. ADHD! ADD! You got ADHD! ADD! ADD! 
Yeah, I remember people the avowed screenshot. Avowed. Their their about reveal was interesting because of this oh my god, Dan Obsidian from Fallout New Vegas to the Outer Worlds, they've shown us they know how to make an RPG that I'm gonna love. When I was watching the gameplay trailer, I was seeing all these flashy weapons and cool spells and these big dungeons, and I was thinking to myself, there's a little bit of Elder Scrolls in there, but with a obsidian twist on it as they always do so i'm looking forward to probably crafting and big beautiful storytelling big set pieces and a gorgeous dangerous world to explore and i'm gonna sink my teeth into it yeah the avowed looks the living car more cartoony avowed, than their cinematic year. trailer now one of the cool things about pc games is that it's the platform for the eccentric and the experimental this is the platform where unconventional games about hypnospace detectives or city builders on space wells are born. Where Farming Simulator has its own esports scene. Our next game is in that same legacy of weirdness, but with plenty of interesting ideas underneath an art house exterior. Indica is a meditation on religion and authority, following a nun's existential journey with the devil by her side. Let's see what kind of trouble the game's creators in Kazakhstan are getting into. Kazakhstan? What the hell? Let me tell you about Indica. Who is she, you ask? Well, she's a nun. A rather plain one, if you ask me. Um, oh. She prays a lot. Works hard. Really hard. Goodness. She even finds some time to chat with... What do you call it? Chot. Poor, poor girl. Of all the boring places. It sounds Why like that dude from the Merlin show. Heaven? This actually looks good, potentially. the hell? Indica? This looks kind of intriguing, actually. It looks like it's supposed to be a scary game, although that was fucking weird. Next on the Most Wanted Countdown, Dragon's Dogma devotees finally get their wish with a long-awaited sequel. Dragon's Number Dogma 16. 2. Dragon's Dogma 2. If you're hoping for a masterwork in open world monster slaying, you can't go wrong with Capcom's RPG cult hit. Capcom has shown just how good it is at creating these mixed action and fantasy RPGs with recent entries in the Monster Hunter series. And Dragon's Dogma 2 looks to continue that trend. Fresh crop of climbable chimeras and a bounty of befriendable pawns, the endless chain stretches on in Dragon's Dogma 2. With Dragon's Dogma 2, we're 10 games deep into the most wanted, and things are about to get a lot colder. In 2018, Frostpunk won wide praise as a Oh shit, Frostpunk 2. In a sequel set 30 years later, new factions arise as resurgent humanity. Are they gonna show gameplay? Greatest threat. Let's itself. see. Let's hear from the game developer in Poland, 11 bit studios. Oh shit. Yo, show gameplay, bro. Show Number gameplay. 15, Frostpunk 2. Oh, damn. Here we go. We survived the storm. Oh, shit. Yo. But it changed us. Mere survival was no longer enough. We kept expanding. More and more people. Dreaming different futures. 
reflecting the futures. Oh shit, really? Dude, they're they're still under wraps with this game. Hi, I'm Kuba Stokalski. And I'm Łukasz Juszczyk. We are both game directors responsible for Frostpunk 2, here at 11 Bit Studios. What you've just seen is the first gameplay teaser of Frostpunk 2. I need and a... As you can clearly see, a lot has changed since the first it game. It was very blurry. the scale of our city. But what remains the same is harsh post-apocalyptic atmosphere that hopefully will resonate with you once again. Stay tuned for more, because the gameplay trailer for Frostpunk 2 is just around the corner. Oh shit, okay, hold on, hold on. Oh god. The Dark Web. You want the streets. They will watch. They will follow. Do not believe him. Stream. We are watching you. Stream. We are in your machine. Stream. We are in your skin. Stream. Stream. Yo! Stream. This shit's fucking cursed. Dark web streamer? Okay. Show's been underwhelming? Mm -mm. I, I've added like five games to my list so far. I was going for three. Oh shit, what is this? It has that Valheim look, but... Huh. Yeah, like, I don't mean to compare... It, it definitely has a cool style. Bell right? Hmm. I feel like Manor Lords is just, like... Manor Lords is my Top most anticipated city builder. Right, coming to early access in December. We're moving forward in our rankings with mm. a sequel to a Metroidvania favorite. We're talking, of course, about Hollow Knight's Silk Song. Oh, hey, Frankie. I uh, think you could use a little backup on this one. Uh, hi, Sean. How did you do that? Oh, God, well, you know, he made it in. It's show tradition to have us, like, he orbit in. in a space frigate or in an underground facility, so you know, I just started calling around. You video called a World War II bunker. I did. My powers are great, and so is my excitement for Hollow Knight Silk Song. Number 11, Hollow Knight Silk Song. Allow me to share three reasons why I'm excited for Hollow Knight Silk Song. First, the graphics. I adore the original Hollow Knight art style, and they're giving me more, but elevating it with more detail and layering. Two, combat in motion. The original Hollow Knight somehow was able to blend super fast, snappy movement with slow, chunky, souls-like combat. And if you look at the Silk Song trailer, you're seeing all sorts of new moves that allow you to dance around your enemies and jump around the environment. It makes me really excited for the second to second experience. But the is third this 2024? and the biggest reason is exploration. Team Cherry are masters of this. There would be a ledge in the original Hollow Knight. That Confirmed or no? To get there, there would be hours of content behind there or new bosses or new enemies or entirely new zones. And it's that exact combination of a beautiful game that's fun and second to second gameplay that rewards my exploration. Oh, I literally can't. Even the devs song. don't know. Two people have been reported missing. A male and a female were last seen heading to the forest two days ago. A teen has not been seen since September 24th. We had a chance to speak with the mother. It's been three years since she's been missing. 
there are a lot of rumors about the lake. Do you personally believe that there is some sinister hiding in there? No, of course not. People love ghost stories, but in the end, they're just stories. Just stories. Just stories. Just stories. Just stories. Are they gonna pull it off? Oh shit, okay, hold on. Our Lady of the Drowned Lake. Armor Reforge? Wait, no. Mad Finger Games? The fuck? Wait, gray zone. True. I did see this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. It had a it had a cool style. I mean, should I? We're nearing the heavy we'll hitters selected by our panel of industry experts as their top ten most wanted games. But first, a fresh look at the gun food gameplay of Spine. Redline, as your combat AI, I have to warn you that pressing the wrong floor may lead to unexpected Spine? consequences. Spine. Who the fuck are you? Early in game and cutscenes footage. No elevator this time. mouse button because we're about to show you some Path of Exile 2. We travelled all the way to New Zealand to speak with the team, climbing the highest mountains to visit their studio in Auckland. Auckland! Number 9, oh, Path of Exile 2. Let's see, let's see. They're saving the good shit for the presentation later, obviously, but... It seems the old ways still hold some power. Oh, that looks... Oh my god, that's actually where you spawn in the first game. The shore. Path of Exile 2 is basically our next generation action RPG. And one of the things we really wanted to make sure that we were doing with it um, is to make the action combat really, really excellent. We just want to make sure that anyone playing the game, you know, you can play it like an action game, feels fun to play, you know, we've added things like dodge rolls and like hack canceling, things like this. And it just means that the, the, the game just feels a lot better than it previously did. Um, as well as everything else that you'd expect from a, a sequel to Path of Exile. 
One thing in particular that sets Path of Exile apart is obviously the depth, but in the itemization systems, crafting systems, but also the sheer number of quantity of monsters, encounters. Like we have over a decade of content that is going to be available in Path of Exile 2 as well. For Path of Exile 2, we really want to keep the mechanics from Path of Exile 1 that are great, but we can now have the opportunity to rebuild them or restructure them in a way that is easier to understand and much more accessible for someone coming at it for the first time, and keep that depth there, either hidden away or much more natural to understand. I think there's a big difference between depth and complexity. Path of Exile 2, in some ways, is less complicated than Path of Exile 1 because we've simplified the sort of technical complexity around doing things like the way you socket skills and things like that um, to make it easier to understand. But at the same time, we're making sure that we keep all the depth in terms of character options and things that you can do. So everything is still there as far as like, what can I do to build my character? It's just that it is easier to do so because you don't have to be worrying, for example, about when you're changing your items that you're going to break the way your skills are working and things like that. So I think that actually uh, new and regular players can tolerate a lot of depth. It's the complexity that we want to try and avoid. The dodge roll actually came about because we really wanted to be able to find a way to having some skills that took longer to do than other skills. But the problem with that is that skills feel really terrible if you start them and then you can't get out of them. So we really needed a way to make that interruption be possible, and uh, the dodge roll was a really great way to do it. Oh, interesting. We actually already had a philosophy for Path of Exile 2 boss design where we wanted to make sure that everything was dodgeable. But previously, we were just doing that by running around. But I think the dodge roll has actually changed a lot of things, and especially because, you know, now that you can expect a player to be able to do that, it means that we can have the expectation on the balance as well. We've done fresh design on everything. We've taken some elements from Peary One in terms of monsters, specific monsters, and, and brought them over and kind of, because they were fun to play. Like, why not replicate something that is still fun to play? But of course, it's full fresh. Yeah, why do you paint. hate yourself um, so much? There are definitely new systems. Why do you cripple yourself so much? Faster, for example, or you think you have to choose Diablo to 4 or we have Path of Exile too? We AI systems that allow the monsters to do skills when while you can have performing both. another skill, much like how a player you can do for pegs. Skill, what is wrong with you? Now do the this same is fucking thing. free. We have a lot more uh, monsters doing interactions with the environment. They'll interact with the world more. A lot more spawning from things. A lot more uh, like in one of our areas, the Isle of Kin, we have monsters riding on top of another monster. And you then can have the both. They get close, they all jump off. There's a lot of design changes that have had to go on. Why to choose a side? The, the new skill system works. So with something like the Mercenary now, we're developing how crossbows should work. We kind of really looked at that and thought, okay, how can we make crossbows just feel completely different than bows? You know, if you look at a shooter, it's like pistols and, and shotguns and things like that. Like, okay, what, what about those makes them different from each other? And so therefore, it makes the whole experience just feel so different than what a bow feels like now. You know, you want that, like, pull the trigger and it instantly fires, you know, that kind Honestly, of Honestly, that, that bow looks and actually that meaty. It looks nice to shoot. Class, we're thinking, like, how can we make the skills here feel so different than every other class. For a lot of the really unique skill sets like the crossbows, which are almost basically guns, there's a lot of work that's been done in other games to make those feel great that we had the opportunity to yeah, bring Yeah, the crossbow the looks chunky. And there's a lot of lessons of what works well in a shooter that can work well in an ARPG if you do the work, get the animations right, get the timing right. We've done a lot of core system changes to make it so that it feels like you've got as much control as you would in a shooter-focused game. There's a lot of what have other games done well that we can bring into Path of Exile that no ARPG is really built on because they don't have the crazy level of skill variety that we've ended up having. So we've got a live stream later today where we're going to be showing off two of our character classes. Uh, we're really deep diving into the mechanics uh, and we're really oh, excited nice. to show that. So if you're interested to know more about Path of Exile 2, then uh, tune into that later today. All right, path of. All right, let's wrap up the first game by making a season that's a vampire survivor style path of exile. Path of exile now, blitz. Now, if you're anything like me, you Come need on. your Christmas shopping. In 1999, Homeworld brought RTS space combat fully into three dimensions. Now, 20 years after Homeworld 2, it's a very different world for real-time strategy, and an excellent time for a comeback. From Blackbird Interactive, this is Homeworld 3. This actually looks kind of cool. Homeworld 3. Number 8. Homeworld 3. Wait, hold on. Am I thinking of the right game? Hold up. First batch of bombers rolling off the line. Looking good. Oh, I'm thinking of another game. 
Alone World 3 is a 3D strategy game set in space. But it's incredibly cinematically compelling. When we were first starting up on Homeworld 3, we were thinking, what are the, some of the coolest spectacles you can think of in the universe that you would want to play in or around? In essence, Homeworld 3 was really our original dream of Homeworld 2. The problem was, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the vision for Homeworld 3 was utterly impossible to make. Massive coronal sun ejections, massive battles in asteroid fields. Massive environments with these giant megaliths, you know, like gigantic Death Star-sized things that would create an interesting landscape for the player to move their units through. We had to wait 20 years before we could do that. So anyone who's interested in strategy or strategy-like games, we want to immerse basically anyone who loves science fiction. For us, Homeworld 3 is a love letter to the fans of the franchise that have been with us over the last you know, 20, 22 years. And with Homeworld 3, we want to just continue that amazing feeling that you got from playing Homeworld 1 back in the day and give that to you again. There's cool potential here, but I gotta you play You can play it. Homeworld 3 at the pace that you want to play. Tactical pause is gonna allow you to actually just pause the game 100%. We have a classic controls, which you'll know and love from Homeworld 2, and then we have our modern control scheme. And that one is built around FPS controls that you know and love from the games that you've played before. So MOBA players, RTS players from other games will be able to quickly understand, okay, if I want to go somewhere, I just click on this element here. Cinematic combat is such a huge pillar to the franchise. We want you to be able to get in there find the coolest camera this angle This isn't your typical RTS. For this anybody isn't comparable to like an Age of Empires. Get right into the action. Or a StarCraft 2. We wanted choke points. We wanted interesting strategic decision making for the player. When engaging in combat, terrain will actually matter. We have tunnels where you can actually take your fighters and frigates through those things, and that will actually remove you from the enemy sensors. So you can ambush them. You can actually use a larger ship to take fire for another ship. So in Homeworld 3, we focused a lot on what wasn't already available for us within Unreal. We wanted to figure out the more distinct views that the game would have that separate Homeworld from any other game, which is the, mostly the skybox and the lighting to give that feel of being in space. When you go into a nebula, the ship understands how much coverage it has from that, which will affect the concept of fog of war in the game. We knew that we wanted persistent damage on the ships, and so then we focused on what that system would be like. You'll see the history of your battles as you go through the whole campaign. Please wish list and pre-order mm. the game. We're super excited to have you. My wall is more interesting than this game. Buddy, fucking relax, bruh. Next up on the Most Wanted Highway, a game that knows nothing beats a road trip. Just you, your car, the open oh, road, yeah, Pacific and the Drive. interdimensional horrors bubbling forth from reality's cosmic wounds. This game, this game looks like, a, this is one of those indie games that looks like you could spend a lot of time in. Number six, Pacific Drive. This this looks like it, it could potentially be extremely the good. Peninsula, the crown jewel of the Pacific Northwest. Its unmatched views and quiet solitude offer everything you need in the most beautiful place on Earth. There is no cause for alarm. Take shelter in now, the this closest one's mine. pocket of stability in your area. And please refrain from thoughts or memories of home. Wait, this is out lies. In plain sight, strange accidents leading to the government's claim of eminent domain and subsequent seizure of the peninsula, the evacuation of 100,000 people, and the attempt and abject failure at containing the rumors that spread like wildfire. Damn. It was hours before Arda came to extract us. Nine. Some zone secrets are best left secret. Eight. Seven. I don't even look up at the sky anymore. Six. Was she a myth, murder, or monster? Five. Nothing had more potential than limb technology. Four. And look what it did to the Olympic Peninsula. Three. Two. One. I have the distinct honor to introduce to you the American people. A new scientific frontier with a raw power, the potential is limitless. 
Yeah, this game looks fucking awesome. It looks so good when you add stuff to your car. February 22nd. Yeah, this game looks like it could be fucking great. Number five, Hell Divers 2. If there's one thing we value, it's interstellar combat with giant acid belching insects, or as the fine soldiers of Super Earth call it, democracy. Now shooting in third person, the Hell Divers redeploy for co op, and our panel of experts can't wait to enlist. Number four, like a dragon, infinite wealth. Hospital food? Yep. Yeah. Well, lately, our old friend, the Seiryu clan's been acting All mighty right. suspicious. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hasuga-san. I'm sending you to Hawaii. There's someone there who wants to meet you. It's your mother, Akane-san. <laughs> Freeze. Cure you, son? High time you met the head of the Barracudas. Name's Dwight. <laughs> Barracudas are after me. Isn't that what's his face? Son. They're after her too, you know. You seen this? This is someone else. Ganja. You trying to tell me there are Yakuza in Hawaii? The head of Kazuma Kiryu. What better trophy than the head of a dragon? <laughs> I really, really need your help, like, right now. I'd take a bullet for a butt any day. <sighs> take cover! Is this you the main new Yakuza new game? But you can't turn back the clock. All you get is the precious time you're given. You ready for this, Kasuga? Let's do this. This game received the highest voting total from our panel of critics, developers, what the fuck and content could it be? It's the long-awaited return of a series that found wonder in jammed firearms and crackling Geiger counters, striking a balance between lethal tension and Final Fantasy VII. Quite be matched, but also, this game is a testament to developer fortitude. This is a project that's weathered wartime, including office relocations and most recently, a oh, stalker too. studio fire. Mm. Here is our most wanted game. That makes sense, yeah. 15. Number one, Stalker 2, Heart of Cornoble. Hello, everyone. I'm Yevgen, the CEO of G Sigan World and the game director of Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Yeah, because should she say corn? I thought I heard something weird. Accept the award for the most anticipated PC game. Being here proves that several <laughs> elements much larger than myself aligned for this moment to happen. Firstly, it's about you, our fans. Many years ago, when the journey we had planned concluded, you refused to leave the zone. You enriched it with stories, love, and life, ensuring that legacy continues through the years. You've shown us that there are still goals to achieve and stories to tell. Your passion has guided us throughout this journey and I can never express enough gratitude for that. I consider this award a symbol of your unbreakable trust. Secondly, it's about the journey itself. This path was extraordinary, marked by dedication, passion and commitment from everyone involved to deliver an unforgettable experience. I feel blessed to lead a team like this, and I dedicate this award to those talented individuals. Stalker 2 stands as the biggest and most complex game in our lives. It was ambitious from the beginning, but evolved into an ultimate challenge. It holds extreme significance and a deeply personal connection for us crafted amidst the most stressful conditions imaginable. 
including the pandemic, war, relocation, cyber attacks, life threats, and more. Additionally, ah, the Sony Legacy. Stalker began as a PC franchise and has always been loyal to the PC community. Receiving this award at the PC gaming show feels like a confirmation that we will remain true to our vision and roots. This holds extra significance for me. I understand that discussing somber topics during a gaming show might not be ideal, but I'll take this opportunity to address the situation in my homeland. The war still goes on in Ukraine. Those currently fighting on the front lines, including GC employees, are real heroes. Not all of them were trained for this. They simply couldn't turn away. Stalker 2 was important for us even before the war, but now it stands as a national product, aiming to convey Ukraine's unbreakable spirit to the world. Damn. Today, we celebrate our victory here, while simultaneously striving for our homeland's ultimate triumph in the future. I am overwhelmed with the joy to recognize that Stalker 2 entered the final phase of development. Whoa! Fellow Stalkers will soon reunite in the zone once again. Thank you all for this award. I assure you, it holds far more meaning than I can express in a foreign language. Now, I want to show you the story trailer we have prepared for this occasion. Oh, shit. Please enjoy. The story trailer, damn. <clears throat> me about my good luck charm. Remember? It's an empty shop. Decided to play soldier with me? Dimitri and I were just discussing a certain puzzle we found in the zone. But we can't quite seem to get all the pieces to fit. Maybe you can figure it out. It reminded me that we used to be puppets. I took just one awkward step. And my whole world plunged into darkness. <laughs> I'm sorry, Strider. <laughs> that was the day the sea fields were turned off. Suddenly, the voice of Monolith was gone. I felt as if I was awakening from a years-long coma. And through the scope, we saw the body of an unknown soldier fall. We had a simple choice. Sit back and just wait for another super emission. Or take a chance and get control of the anomalous energy. Only I didn't choose that path. Unlike you. Damn, okay. <clears throat> Q1 2024. Holy shit, man. Stalker 2 Q1 Thank you for and joining us in counting down the PC gaming show most wanted. Dragon's and Dogma as well Q1. Thanks at Intel for helping us put on this broadcast. That was actually a good event. <clears throat> you know, I feel like we are still following the streak where it's, you know... Right now, obviously, it's kind of... We're waiting for the big games to drop. We're kind of chilling right now, but... This is gonna, 2024 is seeming like it's gonna be another really good start of the year where um, we're gonna see fucking really good games drop, <clears throat> which is fucking sick. Stalker 2, I know the last trailer for Stalker 2 looked like it was downgraded a bit, but I mean, shit. Yeah, Stalker 2, Dragon's Dogma, and uh, that other thing that you mentioned. Another year where the beginning is has really good games. 
the beginning of the year is very easily forgotten at times. But then when you actually look back, the past three years, the start has been have has had awesome years. So we're going into another one. Which is great. I, sw I swear the best games are always in the beginning of the year. That's when everything fucking pops off. And then it's like, you know, you see where everything else goes. Manor Lord is April. Wait, yo, Manor Lords wasn't on that list? That's, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Really? Oh, yeah, this game, Spine. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess I would wishlist this. This one seems kind of maybe. There was also that one that looked scary. It was about the nun who talked to Indica, who talked to, uh... Yeah, oh, it's with a K. Who talked to the devil? This actually looks kind of interesting and potentially creepy. This is by 11-Bit Studios as well. This is from Frostpunk Devs. Or a publisher, a Frostpunk publisher. Yeah, I would actually wishlist this just because it looks kind of interesting. Also, the scary game where you're on the oil rig. What was that shit called? Dark Web Streamer. Oh, yeah, Dark Web Streamer. What the hell? Uh, maybe. I mean, just cuz. Still Wakes. Oh, I already have this on the wish list. Yeah, this looks like it will be a really good potential scary game. Holston already got that shit. Uh, sea of Stars. And then the Drowned Lake. Drowned Lake. This one could be good, just because it actually has a... Hmm. Yeah, okay, sure. Drowned Lake. Pacific Drive. M Manor Lord is top five wish listed. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised this wasn't one of them. Sword of the Sea. Oh, yeah, Sword of the Sea. Yeah, this one looks sick, too. Uh, Frostpunk 2 trailer. The day one hour ago. I wanted to see the in-game shot. That, that shit was so blurry that they showed. We survived the storm. But it changed us. Yeah, they're... They're tra... Hmm... Survival the in-game shot is enough. so blurry. We kept expanding. More and more people. Dreaming different futures. Conflicting futures. Frostpunk 2, we shall see where we go there. They did say they're having a gameplay trailer, probably at the Game Awards. This is just like a small bit. Gray Zone Warfare. I have this wish listed already just because of the potential. I don't see how having more games like this is a bad thing. Let them attempt to fucking cook. Like, don't let them give them the fucking pots, pans, and ingredients and see what they fucking make. You know, this could be a good extraction shooter. I like the environments. Like the map looks like a cool extractor map. Now it's like, can they pull it off? That trailer, it's like, all right, the gunplay looks good. The in-game screenshots look better. Um, but, hmm. We'll see. They all look the same. No, they don't. It looks like the last Ghost Recon game. It kind of does look like Ghost Recon. But, you know. Just like with a very different system, like with every system very different. Um, Hollow Knight, like I, Hollow Knight is cool. I just wasn't big on Hollow Knight personally. That's why it's not on my wish list. I know people are super interested in that shit. I just personally... I'm not very big on Metroidvania games.